All right, moving on to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2014. Now, remember when I heard about this coming out? Michael Bay was producing it, and I'm like, okay. At this point, he was doing okay with the Transformer movies, because in all fairness, the, I think the first three Transformers movies are decent. Um, first one was, what were they? What year did they come out? It came out 27, or 2007, 2009, and 2013, right? When they came out, right? At that point, the first three were all right. And I think this the same year that Age of Extinction came out. I think. Um, yeah, so Transformers movies, at least the first three to me, aren't that bad. So I'm like, okay, he could, he could probably do something good with this. And for what it's worth, I don't think either of his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies are bad. One, he only produced them, he didn't direct them. And I know you say, well, we produced them, but his fingerprints all over this. Yes, I know, with the Mega Fox and the bending down, you can see her cleavage when she's doing it. Yes, explosions. The thing about this, he only produced this. How much more of that would there have been if he actually directed this? You know, take Bumblebee, for example. He directed that, and I don't think he had really anything to do with that movie because there's barely anything. There's barely, there's not a lot of explosions. There's no, no you know, like cleavage in your face or anything. Minimal, if anything. He produced this. This was directed by Jonathan Liebsman. And, you know, I don't... Yeah, the designs... You can say the designs. I don't really care for the designs of the turtles, but... And the one thing that really... That got people pissed off is that they, they took away... The the mythos. Like, Oroku Saki and Hamato Yoshi and all that stuff. The one thing you'll notice with this movie... What's the story? The story is that uh, there is a ruthless crime gang called the Foot Clan just, <clears throat> you know, attacking people, causing crime, stealing stuff, all that. And one reporter is investigating when she is saved by four walking, talking turtles. This leads to a whole new, a whole little adventure and, you know, things happen. There's a character in this movie played by William Fickner called Eric Sachs. He's one of two villains in this movie. The other being the Shredder, of course. But the one thing you'll notice is that Sachs is more prominent than the Shredder. That's because, originally, Sachs was going to be the Shredder. But the fans threw a fit because we can't change everything. And so we had to add the Shredder in. If anything... That made it worse. Because they took out the mythos. So there's no need for a Japanese shredder to be around. And then they try to throw it in there like Master Splinter knows everything about the shredder. But it's never explained how he knows everything about the shredder. Yes, he was in the... He was, you know, he explains that they were all pets of April's father. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. But it doesn't explain like how he gets all the knowledge and how he knows. He, he knows that Sax is a traitor, but how does he know about the Shredder? How does he know all that? How does he have a connection to the Shredder? They took it all away. You know? <clears throat> I think it would have been better if Sax was the Shredder. You hear me out. William Fickner is a great villain. No matter what he's in, he always plays a great villain. So I have no doubt that if Eric Sachs was the complete villain for this, and he was the Shredder, it would undoubtedly be a great performance. I mean, hell, 
he has a great performance. I'm looking at at William Fickner now because I had The Dark Knight on the TV. And William Fickner's in that. But I'm just saying that he has this presence, this villainous presence that works. And I know people threw a fit because when it was announced that that uh, Eric Sack was going to be the Shredder and he's American. Well, you know what? If if Disney can keep casting African American people in in comic book roles that are supposed to be white people, why can't we get a white person cast in someone who's supposed to be Japanese? I mean, it is the 21st century, right? And yes, I am complaining about the casting African Americans in prominent white comic book roles because I think it's just stupid okay yes I'm talking about they want to cast a person of color for both Professor Xavier and Magneto no and then they announced that they're oh Holly Bailey could be Kitty Pride. she's also a person of color no there's a difference there's a, there's a big difference of when they do it you could say oh but um DC did it with uh Will Smith and Abeg Nabagadabadaji or whatever his name is for Killer Croc and Deadshot. Yeah, like I said, there's a difference. DC did it because they knew they had good actors. Will Smith is a great actor. Doesn't matter what color his skin is, he's a great actor. Adwale Adnokadakadabaji Great actor. And technically he's British. Or Australian, whatever. They're great actors. And while Croc doesn't do much, they hired them because they're great actors. I know this is straying away. I get it. But I'm just, I'm, I had to, I have to say something. I'm not going to do a whole video on it because I'll get the other. But I'm just, I just want to say that it's kind of on something because of the whole William Fickner thing. But, um, like I said, DC did it because they cast good actors in those roles. Marvel's only doing it to be cool. We're gonna we're gonna keep up with the trends and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna hire African American actors and Chinese actors. Oh, we're releasing the first Chinese led movie. Great. Good. But you don't need to market it as that. That's why people hated on Captain Marvel, because you they 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 marked it as the first female-led Marvel movie. And then uh, Brie Larson went out there and did her feminist crap. And then people hated on it. If you market it with that in mind, you're just trying to be cool. And it doesn't work. It's not the same with Ninja Turtles and William Fickner. William Fickner... Is a great actor. Can't say the same thing about Brie Larson. Only the only thing I really like she's okay, she's okay in Captain Marvel, but like the only thing I really liked was hey Peter Parker, got something for me. That's really the only thing. Anyway, William Fichtner is a great actor, and while people get all pissy that he's not. He's not Japanese, or he's not of Asian descent, so he can't be the Shredder. Well, you know what? For, uh, I don't know how many years, at least five, he was voiced by an African American on a cartoon. Twice! Because Uncle Phil, whose name escapes me, Uncle Phil, from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, voiced Shredder originally in the 1987 Turtles cartoon. And Kevin Michael Richardson voiced the Shredder in the 2012 cartoon. Both great versions of the cartoon. The first three versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles I absolutely love. This new one, not so much. And it has nothing to do, well, sort of. I understand there's an African American cast involved, alright? But, again, they're trying, Nickelodeon's trying to be cool. And so they made April African and a nerd, African-American and a nerd, and it's 
it's not April. I'm sorry. She's got to be wearing a, she's got to be wearing some form of yellow. She's got to be at least a redhead, brown hair, whatever, reddish brownish, and she's got to be Caucasian. I'm sorry. Otherwise, it's not April. She could be an African American Irma. Open to that. Because Irma was an original character from the cartoon. She was from the comics. So, I'll be open to that. But, and I don't mean to rant about casting. I'm not racist by any means. If you want to have them, that's fine. But if they're in the comics as a specific race. See, Nick Fury's different. Because he was once a Caucasian character. And then later they changed him to an African American character. But as far as I know, these characters that want to cast like Professor X, Magneto, Kitty Pride, have all been Caucasian in the comic books. I know, I'm got off, I know I've gone off topic and I apologize. But I had to say my piece on this. Because I've been keeping it in. Ever since, every time I see it, I scroll. And they keep repeating the same thing over again. Oh, Marvel wants a person of color to play Magneto. I'm just like, no. Alright, no. Don't mess with it. Because... I mean, Fickner is an example, all right? He's a great actor, and he got pushed to the side because people wanted, they wanted to have someone of, of Japanese descent play the role of Shredder, which he's supposed to be, don't get me wrong. And I might be counteracting myself, he's supposed to be Japanese, sure. But it wasn't necessary. Fickner is a great actor, and he can carry the role on his own. And my point in all this is that they shoved Shredder in with some guy. Who I don't even know who the actor is. That's the thing. Some unknown actor. He's Japanese. He'll do. And it weighs down the movie. Alright? It does. Because when you got Fickner oozing with charisma and doing all that stuff. And then he cut to the Shredder fighting the turtles. And he had that scene on the roof where they're fighting the turtles. And, you know... Sax gets knocked out. We never see him again. He was supposed to be in the second movie, but he wasn't for some reason. And we even we got somewhat more recognizable recognizable actor to play him in the sequel, which is fine. He was he was uh, name I can't remember, but he was DK in Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. I know I've ranted and raved about the the race thing. I'm sorry. I'm not racist. I just think that if... I gotta say this one more time and that's it. If the comic book character in question is primarily Caucasian in the comic books, then they should be cast with a Caucasian actor or actress. Alright? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. How would you feel if they say they cast uh, Ronda Rousey to play Storm in the new X-Men movie for Marvel? Be pissed, right? Because Storm is supposed to be from Africa, right? That's what I'm saying. Don't change the origins of our comic book characters. What if they caught? What if they? I thought about this one earlier when I was thinking. What if they cast? Um, oh, I had it. Who was it? It was an African American actor. Cast as Wolverine. Who was it? <clears throat> Oh, shoot. I had it. But you get my point. What if they cast an African-American actor as Wolverine from the beginning and say, you know what, we're going to be progressive now. We're going to cast him as an African-American. Well, he would have to prove it. First, people would be pissed, right? I understand there are some good actors. and it, you know. But let, let's take this. And I'm going a little far, I understand. Should have waited for my Fat Four Stick review. This, it just irks me that Wayne Fickner, it's, it boils down to, I wanted William Fickner to be the main villain of this. Japanese Shredder or not, Wayne Fickner should have been the main villain. But his ass gets knocked out, and then we have a boring climax against the Shredder. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Okay? Um, I forgot what it was. Fam Forstick, right? They cast an African American actor, Michael B. Jordan, to play Johnny Storm. Okay? And then they may cast an African American actor, Edie Cathy or whatever his name is, I remember what the actor's name is, to play the father. Great. 
Then they cast Kate Mara to play Susan Storm. And they don't give any explanation as to what kind of relation there is. Is Sue adopted? Uh, what? Is she adopted? Because uh, you gotta think, if they had a white mother, she would at least have, be mixed. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm just saying, she's from a, I don't know. They don't explain anything. They're just brother and sister. Michael B. Jordan's a great actor. But. That fan, fantastic. Fan four stick sucked anyway. Back to Ninja Turtles. I'm sorry for rambling on. But I needed to express this in some way, shape, or form. I didn't want to do my own video. And this Eric Sachs thing. Proves my point. He's a great actor. And that's my point. If you can get a great actor to do it, that's fine. Like, there's rumors that Denzel Washington can be Magneto. Why not? That could be cool. Sure. But don't do it if you're going to get a great actor to do it. Don't just do it because you want to be cool and hip and with the times and be progressive by casting an African-American actor in the role. Because this is my point that William Fichter is a good actor and he did great. And he should have been the Shredder, and he wasn't because they wanted a Japanese actor. Because the fans wanted a Japanese actor. And he would have been so much better as just being the Shredder. Guys, I've rambled on and on. There's, I need to move on from this because there's still more to talk about in the movie. I, I, I'm down halfway through the movie, and there's still more to talk about. Um, the actors who portray the Turtles, or the voice actors, they're all good. Uh, Johnny Knox feels okay. Uh, Tony Shalhoub as Splinter, great. Uh, Megan Fox does okay for what she's giving. And Will Arnett, I like Will Arnett in this. I thought he was pretty good. Um, yeah. And uh, will be Goldberg for what she's in there. Um, I don't get her character at all. Oh, you sitting there, wait a minute. There wasn't even a uh, black, an African-American character in the movie. Well... In the cartoon. Well, there was Burn Thompson and it, Bernadette Thompson. It's just a different version. But Whoopi Goldberg's a good actress. That's what I'm saying. But she... She goes to... To Bernadette, or whatever her name is. To Whoopi Goldberg. And tells her this story. She has proof on her phone of the turtles, right? She shows her. She still dismisses it. And she gets fired. Right? And let's talk about the second one a little bit. Because she's doing something else in that one. Okay. I guess I could have waited for the second one, but I want to say this now. She was trying to prove that there are four walking, talking turtles. And I understand that by the second one, they claim that someone else saved the day. But in the context of this, there's no sequel. You think she would get her job back. You think that she wouldn't want to cover it up because she'd want to prove it. She would want to show up her boss and prove that there was a that there was turtles. But of course they cover it up. I'm just saying. <sighs> the idea that they can okay, there's mutagen in their bloodstreams and they're sucking it out, right? And I understand that they're sucking out mutagen through their bloodstreams, whatever. Two things could happen here. One, the mutagen is being taken out of the bloodstream, so it would turn them back into regular turtles. It's a movie, so it could work that way. Or two, they would die. It's taking their, essentially taking their blood out of their bodies, and they're nearly dead. So what did they do? They have them. Adrenaline sent through them. That would not work the way they show it in the, in the in the movie, where it wakes them up essentially. Essentially, Sax has taken their blood out of their bodies. They're weak. You inject adrenaline, they're all going to have heart attacks because there's not enough blood to circulate through their system. It's going to instantly give them cardiac arrest with the adrenaline. I'm no medical expert, but I guarantee you they would all 
fucking die as soon as she injected the adrenaline. Especially since it said overdose on the injector thing. They would be deed. And Raphael would be like, uh, shit. He'd be an only child now. Be, be, basically, Donatello, which is why he's not my favorite, because he's smart, but he's still stupid. They'd be dead. I'm just saying, without enough blood to circulate through their body because the sex took most of it out, they would die. I'm just saying. And we get the final fight. And I like this, all right? April delivers the final blow. At this point, it's great. And sitting, watching it now, I absolutely love that. Because, you know, April, what does April do in a cartoon and stuff? And even the other movies, she gets kidnapped or has to hide or runs away. She finally gets to fight and she knocks Shredder off the thing and he falls down. That's great. And since it came out in 2014, no one had a problem with it. It's actually pretty good. If it came out now, people would bitch and moan and groan that it's all about female empowerment. And yes, those were my problems with the Aladdin movie, but I'll get to that in December. All I'm saying is that that was a good idea, having her deliver the final blow. But having Sax gone... From this last part of the film. We don't even see what happens to him. I know he's not dead. And even though. There's not, I suppose. Since there's not going to be a third film. I don't have to worry about. Find out otherwise. But I know he's not dead. He survived some way shape or form. As I swear he moves. I think I remember. But yeah. All in all guys. This was a pretty good movie. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Um, Yeah. Sorry I went on a rant there. But I had to speak my mind. Because Eric Sachs uh, is a great actor. Or Eric Sachs. <laughs> Wayne Fickner is a great actor and didn't deserve to be uh, disregarded for a Japanese actor who no one knew to begin with. And really wasn't that great and was kind of shoved in there. And, you know, Sachs could have been alright, even if it was the CGI at the end. I think Sax should have been the main villain. That's my whole thing. And the castings and all this stuff. If they could be good actors, by all means. African American actors, great. But don't do it just to be cool and just to make your movies seem progressive and with the times. Alright? Have some common sense. Anyway, what are your thoughts on Team Ninja Turtles? Let me know in the comments below. The 2014. I mean, like, share, subscribe, and love, peace, and chicken grease.